Thanks for joining me on episode 904 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Doug Norgman. And I'm Carol Pittner. And we're the authors of Raising Your Money Savvy Family for Next Generation Financial Independence. And we challenge you to really focus on becoming money savvy. One way to be inspired to do that is to listen to this, the Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Mater. What am I doing that makes it next week 1% better than last week? What am I doing today that makes tomorrow 1% better than yesterday? So that I'm constantly focused on just incremental improvement instead of making massive change. And it's also about what you think about in terms of strategy. Where are you trying to go long term? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your priorities? What are your values? What are the things that are most important to you? Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's episode about investing in others through stewarding your talent, I talk with you about how there's a weekly meeting structure that can help your relationships. I share why this works for both couples and singles. And I also share some of the things that we can do and think about during the meeting. You've heard me talk about developing your talent, and one of the best ways to do that is through books. But if you're like most people today, it's hard to find the time to read. And that's why today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Go to inspiredstewardship.com slash audible to sign up, and you can get a 30-day free trial. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from, and you can pick one and listen your way to developing your talents via Audible. That's inspiredstewardship.com slash Audible to get your free trial and listen to great books the same way you're listening to this podcast. So yesterday we talked about the weekly meeting, this idea of having a structured time that if you're a couple, you meet together. If you're a single, you meet with yourself. You have an appointment with yourself to review things. And today I wanted to talk about how this affects your relationships. And yeah, it affects your relationships both for couples and for singles. So let's talk a little bit about couples first. First off, one of the biggest things that causes couples to draw apart over time is a lack of communication. And the truth is, it usually doesn't come from any sort of deliberate act of trying not to communicate. It simply comes from inertia. It comes from so many different things going on. It comes from you're running here and there, you're doing things with the kids, you're doing things with the church, you're doing things with your business, you're both busy at work. Whatever it is, you end up being so busy that you don't spend the time that you used to spend talking to each other, being together, talking about your hopes, your dreams, talking about what you want to see or what you want to do in the next year. And part of the purpose of this weekly meeting is, sure, to focus on the tactical stuff. What's coming up this week? What is, is it that we did last week? What do we need to do better? What is our ideas about how we can use our time or our money better and these sorts of things. And remember, I mentioned yesterday, it's not about looking backwards and beating each other up. It's about looking backwards so that you can then look forward and say, here's what we want to do better. Here's something that you're doing awesome. Here's something that I'm struggling with. How can we work together to get better at this, to, to help each other with this? And the truth is, if you did that, you would begin to get better. But this weekly meeting is also a time for strategy. It's a time for thinking bigger. It's a time for talking about your hopes and your dreams, talking about what you want to do in the next year, in the next five years, talking about what's on your bucket list, talking about the things that you really want to make sure that you do at some point in your life, things that you want to achieve, your hopes, your dreams. It's about talking about all of the things that are important to you now and in the future. The idea of the weekly meeting is to talk about more than just today and tomorrow, but to talk about what is it 
that really brought us together? What is it that keeps us together? What is it that are the things that we have that are our strengths? What are the things that are our dreams? What are the things that are our passions? What is it that we want to be achieving? And let's talk a little bit about singles too. Yeah, you know, at first glance, it seems like as a single, you don't have anyone to communicate with. You don't have to build that relationship, but it can actually affect your relationships by having this weekly meeting. Because here's the thing. Number one, you're actually able to sit down and look at what you want to do, look at what you want to achieve and see if you're on track for those things. And as you have more successes, as you have more feelings that you're making progress, that gives you more confidence which helps you build relationships with others, whether you're looking to get into a long-term relationship or whether we're just talking about friends and family. Having that confidence in your own abilities makes you somebody that is better at building relationships. It also gives you strength from which you can help others. You can become the person that's doing things well. And so when there's a need for giving or for serving or for helping others, you don't have to feel like, I can't do this because if I do, it's going to sink me. Instead, you can operate from a place of strength and know that you can help others and safely do that and still get what you need because you're still paying attention to yourself as well. You're actually able to do both. You're able to get the value from others and you're able to get the value for yourself. It doesn't become an either or, it becomes a, how do I do this both and? How do we both get our success out of this? See, the truth is it affects your relationships with others because it affects how you handle yourself. Whether you're a couple or whether you're a single, the things you do in this weekly meeting, when you think about what are the tactics, what am I doing that makes it next week 1% better than last week? What am I doing today that makes tomorrow 1% better than yesterday? so that I'm constantly focused on just incremental improvement instead of making massive change. And it's also about what you think about in terms of strategy. Where are you trying to go long-term? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your priorities? What are your values? What are the things that are most important to you? And are you setting up your life so you're able to be building towards those things? So that you don't look up at some point later and realize that you've sacrificed your relationships, you've sacrificed everything for something that wasn't the dream that you were after in the first place. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you like this episode on the stewardship of talent, you can go over to inspiredstewardship.com slash talent and sign up for our five-week series on the stewardship of talent. Or if you're in the U.S., you can text 44222 talent tips, that's talent tips, to 44222 and get those tips. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures. Develop your influence and impact the world.